In today's video, we're going to be debunking Gödel's incompleteness theorem completely. Okay, so, um, and we're going to be debunking some more Veritasium and, I guess, like modern thought, which is all a move, in my view, to push people towards confusion. Confusion is the ultimate goal of these people. And when a person is confused enough, they give up their intellectual agency and just say, okay, 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 you think for me, I give up. You're God. <laughs> you, th you do all the thinking for me, right? So I like to make things simple so you can take back more of your intellectual agency. And we have to debunk a lot of these nonsensical ideas in order to do that. So let's get into Gödel's incompleteness theorem here. All right, so this is Gödel's incompleteness theorem, and this is my first investigation, so it's not super deep, but it's probably all you need. Like, I, I went super deep in Einstein, and I wasted a lot of time, because after my first investigation, that was probably good enough to <laughs> come to all the conclusions I needed. Anyways, we're going to start off our Gödel series here, and the Gödel's incompleteness theorem is really simple. It's this statement is unprovable, okay? So it's really that simple. It's just a variation of the liar's paradox which is this sentence is false, right? And if it's true, then it becomes false. And if it's false, it becomes true and so forth, right? So if you haven't seen the liar's paradox, you know, just watch a random YouTube video on that. I'm not gonna explain it in this video. Um, so let's get to this. So first we take this statement as unprovable and we figure out how to express this in mathematical language, right? So, you know, we can invent functions and things like this and turn a lot of logic into math. Maybe we can turn all logic into some sort of mathematical expression, though it's debatable whether you're actually doing math then, right? I mean, if you create like a philosophical symbol and call it mathematical language, you're actually just doing philosophy in mathematical like symbols, right? Anyways, so the next step is we then pack in a bunch more math fluff and jargon. So it's really complicated and confusing. And this way, the only people who can really look at it are professional mathematicians. Um, and they're not going to be able to solve it because it's actually a philosophy problem and philosophers are not going to solve it, be able to solve it because there's too much complicated math involved. So it's a really good way to confuse and, uh, make people, uh, lost. So if we put this statement is unprovable into our system and let's assume that this thing does produce an actual contradiction, then our mathematical system has a contradiction. And if we don't put it in, then he argues our mathematical system is incomplete because every statement of logic should be able to be expressed in some sort of mathematical language. That's the gist of it, okay? I think that's a pretty good explanation. And if I'm missing anything, then let me know. Okay, so how do we debunk the liar's paradox? That's gonna be the first thing. I've seen a lot of solutions. I had a couple of videos on this. And I'm not convinced the most by my own solution, okay? I think Steve Patterson's solution is the most convincing I've seen, which is just that it's invalid nonsense, okay? So let's talk about this question. Laughter is lighter than time, true or false? So when I mean lighter, I mean like in terms of mass, it has less mass or weight than time. If we declare that laughter is lighter than time to be false, then it must be true that time is lighter or equal mass to laughter. That is very absurd. And it's obviously not correct because it's invalid. We can come to all kinds of crazy conclusions when we call invalid, when we, when we give like invalid logic or true or false evaluation. Something has to be valid, valid, in order to evaluate it as true or false. Okay, so that's the big mistake. It's this, what I call, I call it like this failed binary thinking. Sometimes people are like, there's all, if it's not this, then it must be that, right? But it's like, well, sometimes there's like a triangle of options here, right? There's true, there's false, and there's invalid. And that's what's going on here. Not everything can be true or false. If I simply say who, is who true or false? It's not saying anything about anything. You can't give it a true or false evaluation, right? So that solves the liar's paradox because the liar's paradox is simply just invalid. It's saying this sentence is false, but there's no true or false content to actually evaluate, right? It's the same as saying, you know, who is false? What? 
That makes absolutely no sense. They're saying blue is false. No, it's not. It's just invalid logic, okay? That resolves our liar's paradox. And there's more resolutions too. I have a bunch on my channel if you want to watch those, but that's if we assume it's not invalid logic. All right, so this is really just a variation of the liar's paradox. We're saying this statement is unprovable. Well, if it's provable, then you've proved that it's unprovable. And if it's unprovable, then it's, you can't prove that it's unprovable. So you get this same sort of fluctuation, oscillation, whatever you want to call it, the same like problem as the liar's paradox. And it's going to be the same solution. This statement is unprovable, has no valid content, which we can evaluate, right? It's simply just an invalid statement. And that's it. Gödel's incompleteness theorem is debunked. Veritasium is debunked. And logic, logic, logic is triumphant. Victorium.